Well, we're here today to protest for peace because we don't agree with the president's uh, policies on uh, war and occupation and uh, the use of targeted killings from unpersoned drones. And we don't like the threats against Iran. So there are lots of things that we're here to protest for peace and against U.S. policy. When President Obama was elected in 2008, he said, if you uh, hold, hold me accountable, then I will uh, be your president too. And basically he was encouraging people to protest against policies that uh, they disagreed with. So we're doing what he asked. The U.S. has been talking about in intervening militarily in Syria, uh, and now they've basically said that they're going to send weapons to the, uh, to the uh, rebels there. And we don't really know what the outcome of that is going to be. Like, basically, what has been going on in the last several months is that what started as part, as part of the Arab Spring has become a destabilizing effort where the U.S. says uh, Bashir Assad has got to go. And when they're saying that, that means that they want to control uh, Middle East politics, as they, have, as they did with Iraq, as they, did, uh, in, uh, as they do when they uh, fund Israel, as they do all over the Middle East. And it's all about controlling the resources and controlling the geopolitical uh, area. And they, they, they really don't care about human rights. I'm here in support of the Occupy movement. Uh, we're here to protest uh, Obama and his corporatism, his uh, blanket support of things like Goldman Sachs, his uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which uh, basically entails that in, uh, American citizens can be held indefinitely without trial. There's more things than, uh, th than you can point out about Obama's presidency. I mean, promises not uh, fulfilled. I mean, uh, there's a lot of us here that are in support of uh, blocking the coal trains coming through our, our beloved city, um, uh, polluting it. So that's basically why the occupiers that I know personally are here protesting. Mainstream media seems to support the infighting between left and right. In my humble opinion, the greatest conspiracy that the rich have ever perpetrated against the poor is separating us from each other. A Democrat and a Republican, an anarchist, a Christian, a libertarian, we all have more in common than we have differences. Okay, we all, we all uh, want, want what's best for our children. We all want clean air. We all want decent education. We all want uh, equity, equity. We all want uh, equal protection under the law. These are very simple things. And as long as the rich can keep us in fighting, uh, Democrat, Republican, Christian, uh, y you know, pagan, whatever. I as long as they can keep us in fighting, they can control us and, and distract us from the fact that we should be resisting them. And I don't mean violent uh, uh, revolution. What I mean is eventually I feel that human humanity will evolve to a point to where through enlightened self-interest we can come to a point to where we can tell the elites that actually run this planet, the ownership class, that thank you but no thank you. We don't need you. I mean, you've done a really good job of running our lives, and we understand that you live a fear-based existence. They're, they're slaves to their own avarice and need to control things. But once we come to a point as a culture, as a global culture, that we can say to these people, we don't need you anymore, you know, the, the world's going to be in a better state. And I think alternative media is the first step in that direction because everything is biased. Every alternative media channel that you're going to get is biased. But guess what? You get to pick and choose which bias you want to listen to. So you can have a more well-rounded perspective of what's going on if you participate in alternative media. So yes, I became part of alternative media, uh, working with Occupy Portland's media. I run a website called OccupyPortlandNews.com and I try to give uh, the world of perspective from an Occupy uh, direction. And uh, I love all alternative media, even if they don't agree with me, because they're going to give you a better perspective than the mainstream. I don't want to see the whole Northwest ruined with these coal transports, both barges and trains. We'll go from being very green to be very gritty. The New York Times isn't going to write about what a wonderful place Portland is when we have a thousand coal cars a day coming through our town, through our state. And what's happening in Vancouver is even more deplorable. 28 coal trains a day full in open cars. It will be just disgusting. And President Obama could stop this. He has the pen. He could do it. This issue has been so hush-hush. Um, it's really only come to light to most people. Um, in April and we've been doing canvassing and a lot of people don't even know about it. A lot of people who are waiting in line to go to the luncheon don't know 
about the coal transport. The governor did a really good thing. He said, not only do we need to find out what the effects are at each site, the six sites that were the ports, but he also said, we must find out what it happens through the whole system, and we also have to have a national policy of this effects. I mean, it's no accident we're having this horrible weather in the um, east and in the Midwest of record high temperatures, record storms. Uh, coal contributes to global warming. But I also don't want to live in a neighborhood that has eight coal trains coming down. I'm an organic gardener. I have 25 raised beds. I would not be able to live in my house that I thought I was going to live in till the day I died. I would have to move. I believed in his change. I believed that he would care about the youth and care about fixing this economy, but instead he spent billions and billions of dollars of taxpayer money going after medical marijuana patients. Why have we legalized alcohol, but not marijuana? Marijuana is medicine. This prohibition costs billions and billions of dollars and it's not working. Why are we still ruining our children's lives? Why would we take away their financial aid and their scholarship money? Why do we have incarceration instead of treatment as the first program? Why do we allow 35,000 people a year to die of legal prescription drug overdoses, but not let people smoke marijuana, which is safer than alcohol and tobacco and has objectively never killed anybody? Anybody! Enough of the lies! No more drug war! Let states set the medical marijuana policy. Let states legalize. Federal government back off. So the NDAA is one of the reasons why I'm here. I voted for Obama in 2008. I was a huge supporter. I even did the whole rounding up voters thing as a volunteer. And then he signed um, NDAA, even though it had that special section in it. Though You know, the one that says that they can detain Americans for an indefinite amount of time without a trial. And he signed it instead of vetoing it when uh, Congress put that in there. And I'm very disappointed in that. And so I'm here to show that disapproval so that he knows that even though I'll be voting for him anyways because he's better than Romney, I'm very, very unhappy. Because I only have two choices. One's awful and the other is worse. Unfortunately, that means I have to pick the awful choice. The one that is leaving us still in wars when we don't even have the money for education. The one that you know let NDAA slide. All of these things that he's let go on, the health care um, for everyone, the universal health care, he had a lot of compromises on that. That was very disappointing. Um, and unfortunately, I still have to vote for him, and there's no accountability because the other choice is just as bad, if not worse. So then you think voting, it's important to vote then? I do, but at this point in time, um, the system that America has for voting is so far gone and so corrupted by the influence of money from lobbyists and corporations and the one percent or the elitist groups of people that I don't really know what how much weight my vote carries anymore because I don't have that kind of money and money's all that matters. President Obama talks about uh, not wanting to ship jobs overseas but he's pushing this uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership and that is going to ship a lot of jobs overseas. It's a the plan is to lock the whole planet into one giant trade agreement that screws the people and helps the corporations. And uh, another thing is all these export of uh, fossil fuels, the coal trains, the uh, the LNG, and uh, the tar sands oil is really just about like unbolting a paper machine and sending it overseas. It's sending jobs over to Asia to work for people that are working for peanuts in these in these terrible sweatshop countries where they have no rights. Uh, it's a terrible thing and Obama's pushing that. At this point it's the Pacific Rim but it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, the whole world. It's open, it's gonna be an open agreement and they won't tell even Congress people, even Senator Wyden, he's the head of the chair of the Trade Committee, doesn't know what's in the agreement. But the 600 corporations that are writing the agreement, they know what's in it. They're writing it. But our, our Congress people and senators, they, they, 
can't know. They're not. They're keeping it secret from him. Uh, Senator Wyden, who is the chair of the Senate Subcommittee on Trade, uh, if he, if if he is allowed to see the text, he would have to go into a small room with no cameras, no recording devices, no pencil, no paper, no ability to make any kind of notes uh, and look at it. And then when he left the room, he'd be sworn to secrecy and be unable to tell us what it was he saw. This is this is totally outrageous behavior, uh, you know, that that our elected officials can't see this uh, text. It's outrageous that we can't see the text. It affects all of us. So eventually, though, they're going to have to vote. Congress is going to have to vote and end up. Yeah. In the law. Uh, yes, they will. But most likely. Uh, they will all have enacted um, fast-track authority again, and so Congress won't be able to have the normal kind of debate that they do on any other kind of bill. They won't have be able to make any changes to it. Uh, they'll only be able to say yes or no. We represent people in the manufacturing industry, mostly pulp and paper industry, and we see job loss, the closures of profitable mills. Um, for instance, the Albany Mill, you may have seen on the news where they just imploded the building down there. Um, International Paper owned that mill, and it's, uh, even though it was profitable, they closed it, and the equipment most of the time gets moved overseas. The Blue Heron Paper Mill, which was 100% recovered waste paper, um, is closed. They have a very diff had a very difficult time um, competing against Chinese for the recovered waste paper, and that equipment sold and headed to China. It'll be reinstalled and, and brought back online. So, you know, the trade agreements continue to cause heavy job losses, especially in manufacturing. And it's got to stop. This, this is crazy. Obama, in his first, uh, you know, when he ran for office the first time, made a commitment to uh, renegotiate and change NAFTA-style agreements. He hasn't done that. He's done, um, if you look at the last three trade agreements, they were basically Bush-style NAFTA agreements, and now the TPP is following suit on that. So um, we believe there needs to be a better economic policy and a better trade policy to create jobs in this country instead of the job loss we've had. So. Uh, I'm here because I'm opposed to all of this, uh, half of our budget going for the military and for wars of aggression. I think that we need to keep our fund, our money here and to help our people here. I'm opposed to the bank ballot. I'm opposed to practically everything that's going on in, in this country right now. And I think uh, the president has a lot to do with that. He's beholden to uh, the, war, the uh, defense contractors and to the uh, bank, the uh, major banks in this country. Clean coal is a contradiction in terms. I'm not for that. I, don't, I think that we should be, we got enough energy. They said, somebody said 96 million miles away is far enough to live from your uh, nuclear energy source. So that's good. We'll use that. Um, I don't like the surveillance, especially. The, I don't feel like I have any privacy anymore just walking down the street. I am definitely a peace advocate and I have been for a hundred years or so. Um, nobody seems to be listening. All the money's going somewhere else. Um, I don't like the fact that they raise billions of dollars for campaign and they don't spend it on the people spend it on each other and I, I just uh, I did to me that's a waste we're hungry and we don't have health care and we don't have freedom really you can't marry who you want you can't uh, live where you want to live and you can't actually worship who you want to worship if actually well I'm here to protest about drones because I think it's really important you know we talk about justice in this country and and then we go ahead and assassinate people in Afghanistan and particularly in Pakistan and you know there's a lot of innocent people killed as a result and even those who might be part of al-qaeda still deserve a trial and so forth as far as i'm concerned it's a pretty horrendous situation i'm for universal health care i think we need to take care of the people here i'm for good living wages for all of our people for people to get jobs um, I'm also uh, for peace and uh, for our country to be a more peaceful nation. And I just hope that we can all eventually find something common where we can all get together because I think we can do it if we can be a stand together. It's a new world, a new paradigm. Free Cascadia!